My husband, who's lived on this property right over here for like 40 years, said that at that time, you could touch bottom on sand anywhere you went. And that almost doesn't exist now. The ponds are the last remnants of undisturbed natural beauty on Cape Cod. They've never been built on, they've never been crossed by trails. And they are the last little remnants that we've got. And let's keep them as pristine as possible. It's been breaking my heart that there are days that I can't swim here because the water quality is different. We got a really big problem. It's not just a lake here or like there, or a little bay over here, extra seaweed. It's a big time problem. We had, um, I think, one of the longest spanning cyanobacteria blooms that this lake's ever had. It was 26 days. These blue-green algal blooms, these toxic blooms, they, um, they are the canary in the coal mine for how we are treating our environment. You see that more ponds are having it, and even the length of the bloom is also increasing. Basically nature as it is, it can handle the amount of nitrogen that comes across it through natural processes. But if we concentrate often human activities, you're increasing more nitrogen coming to the pond through runoff or underground through the groundwater that eventually functions in a way that creates imbalances in the pond. And these imbalances often result in either one type of organism dominating, where you can have more phytoplankton or macroalgal like a seaweed bloom, or you can have something like a cyanobacteria bloom that um, occurs when there's a lot of nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, warm temperatures, stagnant waters. And we've been seeing more and more each year of those, unfortunately. So when you have high temperatures, and then we are also dumping a lot of nutrients, the waste from various sources is entering the ponds, and when you have excess nutrients, high temperature, that's a perfect scenario for having a huge bloom. So one of the things we have to figure out is how we can have less nutrients in the pond. And one of the ways is the macrophyte plants that are around the edge, they take up the nutrients. If you take them all away, you have lots of nutrients and no plants, you're gonna have more plankton. And so helping people to understand if they want to use this beautiful body of water, they've got to think about what their behavior is doing and help to be a spokesperson with us. When we first got here, we had a really green lawn that, uh, that I kept uh, fertilized and uh, insecticized. And I realized that that probably isn't the best thing to do in a neighborhood like this or on the Cape. And so we stopped doing that a few years ago. You know, it struck me that Back in the day, a really green lawn was a sign of you're doing a really good job. And today, you know, that's a sign that what you really want to see is somebody with a scraggly lawn that hasn't been fertilized, so. Don't fertilize, seriously. I mean, it's the biggest thing that they can do right away to stop phosphates and nitrogen from coming into the lake. Part of our work in our community group is to encourage people to make sure they get their septic systems pumped on a proper basis because you know, we know that, that septic systems account for a lot of the cyanobacteria growth. It was an overwhelming um, realization that it's going to take work on the sewer commission, work on the conservation commission, work with the board of health, work with the select board and the town manager's office to understand how everything connects and works. As a priority, I would like to see uh, ponds selected to be treated in a long-term way so that we have examples of, look, if you just take your time, you can improve the conditions on these ponds without, you know, just trying to make it disappear. So whether it's being a boater, whether it's being a kayaker or a swimmer, if we want to be able to use the water, we've got to try to engage and we've got to try to save it.